Well, God bless you, brothers and sisters. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and ever be so glad in it. We give God praise that God has allowed us who still remain uh, to enjoy uh, in just a day or so uh, the observation of Thanksgiving with our family and loved ones. And I'm just excited to be able to share here at this 12 noon another devotional uh, during our Men's Focus Month. And I want to encourage each and every brother, uh, your brother, your father, share this with them. I want to encourage everyone that has the opportunity to listen, whether you're a pastor or whether you're a professional who works for a career. I believe that these uh, wisdom nuggets can be a blessing to you. Today, I want to take a moment and then just talk a little bit about uh, a man having vision. Uh, dare to be a man of vision. That, that, that's what I want to talk about. Dare to be a man of vision. And I want to talk about that. Can we pray? Let's pray. Father, I thank you that in your holy word, it is always your desire that men should be able to see. Should be able to see clearly. There are no blind women in scripture, but there are blind men. You talk about Pharisees and those who were religious but could not see. It was because they thought that they were victorious uh, in their physical lives and the things that they had constructed by their own hands. We found out that only victory is envisioned through you. Praise God. And I pray that every brother that gets the opportunity to listen to this teaching on today uh, will refocus their lives to have the vision that only comes from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2 Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2 says it on this wise write the vision and make it plain so that he that readeth may run that's the King James version there's another version that literally says write the vision but it doesn't say vision it says revelation Suggesting that the vision that any man has does not come from you. That the vision that you have must be revealed unto you by a higher power, higher being, which we know is the Lord God. George Washington Carver years ago and uh, saw a peanut. He said that the Lord sh showed him a peanut rolling on the floor. And then he was able to construct, looking at that peanut, over 50 ways in which to use a peanut butter. Peanut butter. And all kind of ways he used the peanut. And he's a multimillionaire for generations to come for his children who are still eating off of that one vision. And I want to take a moment to tell you, if you ever get a vision from God, there's much that already comes with that vision. Because Psalm 75 declares... But the blessings of the Lord does not come from the east, nor the west, nor the south. But all of the blessings come from the Lord come from the north. It comes from him. And when God reveals something to you, he's already went ahead of you and made way and given provision. I'm, I'm going to talk about that in just a moment. But Habakkuk talks about you got to take the vision or the revelation that God gives you. Watch this. And then write it down on tablets. Is what the text says. You got to write it down. And I know uh, we were taught uh, when we were little boys, we used to see girls walk around with little uh, diaries of books and write down their notes. And you never seen boys with diaries. Uh, if they had one, you thought he was kind of what of a girly boy. Uh, but I would tell you the scripture is teaching every man should have a notepad to write down the progress of the things that God has given him. If he's ever going to see the fulfillment or the progress of that vision. So when we talk about vision and we'll talk about vision in uh, three ways. Vision. Uh, number one, you need a vision of image. Everybody's trying to be like somebody. Everybody sees something. And if you're not down into the very vision of image that God has made you in to be, you spend your whole life trying to be like somebody else. So we talk about vision of image. We talk about vision through interaction. Uh, we're living in a uh, society where everybody's hiding behind phones and texting. 
and you're missing the, one of the most powerful gifts that God gave, and that's human contact, right? So we talk about vision of image, vision of interaction, and then we talk about vision for increase. That's what we talk about on today. A man needs a vision of his image, he needs a vision of interaction, and a man needs vision, praise God, for increase. So vision for image, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, it says it on this wise, it said, and let us make man in our image. That was God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Ghost having a conversation about how to transform and make a man. God, the Father, is the ability for a man to be a father like the Father. The Son is a for ability for a man to live by faith and suffer for the betterment of his family and survival. And God, the Holy Ghost, is the ability to live in this world with power to transform any situation, kick the devil in the butt, and command and decree faith in others and for others. He said, let us make man in this image. And every man needs image, an image that he gets only from God. Image, first of all, when he talks about this in Genesis 1, he says man needs image because his image represents his structure. Now, when you have structure, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, one thing I want you to know is you, you got to have structure because everything God did, he did it with structure. The Bible says in Hebrews uh, chapter one that the worlds were framed, use a word called frame by faith. That's structure. When God got ready to talk about how in the world were man to operate in the earth, he created bones. Bones give you skeletal structure. You rip them bones out your body, your body will collapse. The body has to have bones. Bones is where the anointing of man lives because that is in his structure. And can I tell you, no matter if you go out and get all kinds of money, no matter if you go out and get the finest girl, no matter if you go out and declare you're going to establish wealth, it don't matter if you hit the two point million, uh, four billion dollar lottery. If you bring that money, that woman, those circumstances in a man's life who has no structure, it soon will destroy him and it will collapse. Structure is the ability to construct a plan or a pathway. Every day you wake up in the morning, you should have a pathway in what you had choose to accomplish. Not to sit here and, and to teach you to the saints all over the world, friends and brothers. It took structure to sit down and develop a pathway to make sense out of vision. Structure is how a man ought to live. He got to have some structure. What you going to be doing tomorrow? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what I'll be doing tomorrow. What you going to be doing next week? I hadn't thought that far. When a man has vision from God, his very image, when you see him, he moves. The way he moves, the way he learns, the way he goes about. He goes about with the image of God, and that requires structure. Not only does it require structure in your image, but it requires statues. David declares, Lord, teach me thy statues and thy ways that I may teach sinners your statues and ways. He said, teach me first and I'll teach others. See, a relationship with God allows him to teach you his statues. His statues are his decrees. It's what he spoke over your life. You know what a statue is? Let me give you one. Brother, you the head and not the tail. You above and not beneath. Every day I challenge you on this week, you need to write down some faith confessions. We practice them in our church, and I believe they're powerful. In the, in the beginning of every service, we have a faith confession. A faith confession is saying, I'm going to conquer this day by the power of the Holy Spirit. And every darkness that rises against me, every fallible tongue that speaks against me shall not be able to hinder my progress in Jesus' name. See, that's faith. And you have to live with that by vision. Can you see uh, Noah out there trying to build that ship? Nobody understood what Noah was talking about. Talking about it's going to rain. This man had to have statue. He had to wake up every day with a faith confession. And whatever God has spoken to me, it shall come to pass. A hundred years? How do you stay that strong for a hundred years holding on to your vision? 
is that you keep speaking statues in your life and making declarations and faith confession. That's what God did. How he formed the world there in Genesis, didn't he? Let there be light and there was light. All right. And let the light be split that it may shine in the day. They call that the greater light and the lesser light at night. That's called the moon. God had declarations. And whatsoever he said it, that's what it was. And you got to have that if you have vision in your life. I've had the wonderful opportunity to lead this wonderful congregation for over 10 years now. And I walk around the church sometime with uh, tears in my eyes, just really thanking God. Not for the building, not the tangible things, but for vision. Vision for him to say, this is the place you shall uh, bring the saints of greater works. I looked around. It was an empty hub. I could hear little mice running around. I was like, what are we going to do with this? He said, this is called the, this place is called there. And I'm going to bring resources and people to this place that's going to fulfill the vision that I have revealed unto you. Vision uh, of image. You got to have it. It's structure. It's statues. And then thirdly, it is supply. As long as a man walk on the earth, somebody going to want something from you. And let me tell you something, nothing is more frustrating than being a man and not having something to give. It frustrates a man who doesn't have anything to give upon the ass. You imagine a man, children run up on you and ask you for a candy bar and you don't have any money. That'll bother you. But God is a God of supply. Now, you may think when I say supply, you're thinking about money. No. Supply in this essence means to make available to someone. And there are two things that I want you to know that every man that is a kingdom man of vision should make available to everyone in your life. Number one, salvation. You should make yourself available as an instrument of salvation, su suggesting that you know how to salvage every situation that somebody's going through. And I take a moment to minister to some man that's watching this. That is God's going to salvage a situation you're in right now that you cannot see any good that's going to come out of it. Hallelujah. I believe that God's going to strengthen you and give you the ability that when people run to you, you'll be a refuge for them. When they run to you, you'll be a, a voice of compassion and, and confession unto their lives. That's number one is salvation. When people run to you also with supply, you're going to give them strength. And that could be money. Somebody just need to be strengthened to get through some situation. But it could be your contacts. It could be your resources. It could be your heart. It could be your ability to see beyond the natural. It could be your spirit of prayer. But whatever it is, be a man of supply. Hallelujah. And it's about time out for wimpy back men that always need somebody to pray for you. I, I'm not trying to, you know, upset anybody. But listen to me. It's time for men to stop being wimpy back. You need somebody to pray for you. You got to borrow money all the time. You need somebody to bail you out. Snap out of it. You're made in the image of God. God made you, hallelujah, with structure, with statue, and with supply. I, I, I better quit. Uh, but I wanted to encourage you. You got to have vision of image. Take that up with God. Are you walking in the image of God? Hallelujah. Not only vision of image. All right. Should a man have vision of image? But number two, he should have vision of interaction. Listen, don't let this phone age fool you to think that the greatest currency in the earth is relationships. You got to talk to people. Well, I get nervous talking to people. Well, you better sharpen up your vocabulary because the Bible says that the Lord will bless you and cause men to give unto your bosom. That's conversation. That's interaction. That's exchange from my hand to your hand. Every wonderful account of Christ Jesus is human interaction. And you hiding out. And let me talk to those men that stay on the couch. You don't go to no church. You're just a good man. you spiritual. You know the Lord. But you don't have interaction. you selfish. And I don't mind saying that to you. Your whole world evolves and exists around. You don't know the stuff I do behind the scenes. That, nobody's talking about resources that shall be perishable. I'm talking about the food that shall not perish. I'm talking about the word of God. Sitting with the brethren of God, praying, sending up timber for children and generation of, of, of fatherless children, as James declared. Hallelujah. Coming together with men of like mindedness. To make a difference in the lives of the world, in the community. 
We must have interaction. Interaction. Col Colossians chapter 4. Verse 5 and 6. Colossians chapter 4. Verse 5, verse 6. Listen to what it says. It says, walk in wisdom towards outsiders. Making the best use of time. You see that? And let your speech always be gracious. I like this because I'm a country boy. It ain't too much food we ate without salt. It's saying you ought to be seasoned when you talk. Well, where do I get this seasoning at? Kroger's? H-E-B? No. This is the season of spending time with God in prayer. That God words your mouth on the right words to say at the right time in the presence of strangers, in the presence of outsiders. You may not like this, but if you read your Bible, it wasn't the insiders that had any wealth or had the power to make legislation or change. The people that had it that God used were outsiders to the children of Israel. And when God sometimes want to give you favor, he want to give you favor in the marketplace. All right. Not with the members of the church. Amen. Because most members of the church don't have just as much as you have. But God got some outsiders that if you would word your mouth and you would become interactive, that God can utilize you in a special way and see things accomplished for his good. Hallelujah. Interaction is required in two ways. Number one, I'm telling you, and that's verbal. You're going to have to be verbal. I'm challenging every man. Dare to be a man. I'm going to flash that book at the end of this teaching. But I want you to get that book and read about that. Dare to be a man. Just read it. Take your time and read it. Get with another brother. Read it. Make your wife crawl up on your lap. Your girlfriend. Come on. And help you pronounce words that may be funny to you. Whatever you got to do, you must become a man of vocabulary. Because let me tell you this. Isolation counsels communication. You're going to have to communicate. And when you communicate, don't nobody want to hear you talking about duh, uh, 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 duh, uh. <laughs> no. Not the people God wants you to meet. You're going to have to indicate verbally and then physically. Physically suggests that when I'm walking in the image of God, there's a certain um, dress God requires. I'm not saying go out here and get no zoo suit with no bow tie and hat and put on glasses. All right. And all that different stuff. I'm just talking about clean cut i'm talking about listening to the holy spirit when you're going somewhere uh, and and i wish i could give you examples of my i really like to dress down but sometimes my greatest favorite moments is god made me go back in the house and change what i was wearing and i ran into somebody all of a sudden that was able to connect me to a kingdom portion of the vision and i'm just telling you in your interaction in this season don't hide behind phone text pick up the phone and talk to people and you will be amazed at things that flow from them, from God, for you, in your life to help you accomplish your vision. Vision for image. I'm almost done. Vision for interaction. And then the last portion of this teaching today is vision for increase. Increase. Second Chronicles 1 verse 10. Increase. Second Chronicles chapter 1 verse 10. It says, Lord, give me the wisdom and the knowledge to lead your people. This is King Solomon asking uh, that when he thought of increase for his life, he understood what good is to get natural resources and don't know how to use them. I see brothers, man, hustle two or three jobs, make money, spend seven a hundred dollars on an old car, uh, add rims to it, and then blew forty five hundred. $5,000, $10,000, and then the car goes go belly up. Or you did all of that and you ain't got nowhere to park it. It, it. it amazes me how we think. You spend 15 grand cash money to redo a car only to take it to a house you can't park it under a garage. You just increased the depreciated value. Solomon was there. God asked him, if you read 2 Chronicles 1 and 10, he said, you sure you're not going to ask me for money and all the riches of the land and favor and contact with folks? He said, no, sir. All I want from you is your wisdom, because wherever your wisdom is, there is increase. And I want you to hear me, brothers and sisters. Don't go chasing things you think can yield you increase. Increase 
watch this, that the Bible calls the blessing of the Lord will make it rich and add no sorrow. That kind of increase only comes from God's wisdom. Praise God. And in wisdom is those two things is wealth and righteousness. And if you're going to have a vision for increase, it just involves uh, Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. And then all other things will be added. You see that? Added. I want God to do the adding. I don't want to do the adding. Because I may add some stuff to my life that I think is just suitable. But it could be the thing that cripples me from seeking God's wisdom. And brothers and sisters, I'm finished. You're going to have to have vision for increase, but it needs to come nothing less than seeking God's wisdom. And when you get God's wisdom, two things are in that wisdom, wealth and righteousness. Righteousness is the fact that the Bible says that prosperity destroys a fool. Why increase you and within yourself? You don't have wisdom. You're a fool. To increase a righteous man is to increase his righteousness. His righteousness is just his godliness. Godliness, you ready for it? Is nothing more than contentment. Contentment in everything I have, everything he made me to be. If I can find peace with that, I'm not outlandish and seeking things and going after things that I cannot handle. But vision for increase is to increase the wisdom of God and in return, God will attract wealth and God will strengthen your righteous resolve so that you can live a life that is pleasing to God. God bless you. Amen. Dare to be a man of vision is our lesson on today. Can I pray with you? Father, I thank you for this lesson on today. I pray that every man will get a pen and a pad and begin to write down the very revelation that you have given unto him. I pray in the name of Jesus that God will make men men of image. Hallelujah. That God will make men men of interaction. And that God will make these men men of increase. And God, we already know that whatever you do for us, we want you to know you will get the glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day is my prayer.